I'm making fried chicken and biscuits. The chicken's marinating, so now it's time to bake off those biscuits. Roll it out to about half an inch thick, and then fold it in half, and just roll it just gently to press those two layers together. So now I've created that perfect line for the biscuit to open in half and be flaky at the same time as fluffy. I have a two and a half inch cutter. Cut out these beautiful biscuits. And there's no need to waste the scraps. Re-roll the dough just gently. Not a bit is wasted. They're the ones that I can save for breakfast tomorrow morning. Speaking of which, I have plans to sneak out and buy some local, locally made jams later on. And now, these take a hot, hot oven, 425 degrees. Because of the yeast and the baking powder and the baking soda, bam, when they hit the heat of the oven, they just poof right up. And they only take 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to pop these two trays in the oven. And in that time, I can get the chicken started. I've got a pot of oil filled just halfway that I'm slowly heating up here. I'm trying to bring it up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using vegetable oil. So we've got the marinated chicken. And then... The coating is not some fancy high-tech batter, it's simply flour, straight flour. Three cups should be enough. And with a little more salt and pepper, because even though I seasoned the buttermilk, you still have to season the other crust layer. And then, my little secret for the crispy, super crispy coating, baking powder. And that promotes crispness. So the same thing applies even just to a dry flour mixture. So I just stir that into the flour and it does the trick. Let me get the chicken coated. So I shake off a little of the buttermilk, but not too, too much. This recipe is one of those that the crispness stays. So you can even fry the chicken ahead of time and then just rewarm it and it stays just as crisp. All right, the oil just hitting 350. So it's time to drop in the chicken. And when I say drop in, I mean carefully lower away from myself so I don't splash. Oh, it smells good. In. Now adding this cold chicken will bring the oil down, but I've got that quick sear on the outside now, and I do actually want the temperature to drop a good 25 degrees, because that way the lower heat will cook all the way through the chicken without burning the outside. It can take about 10 to 14 minutes, depending on the, the sizes of the chicken pieces, but that's why I cut the chicken into those equal sized pieces, so they'll all take about the same time to cook. Because the chicken is completely submerged, I just move it around to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. Now I'll keep an eye on the chicken. Oh, chicken's about done. But I can smell the biscuits too. Oh. Yep. Oh, perfectly golden on top. And then look at that flakiness. And they're oh, hot, but light as air. These look like those cookbook photos from the 50s, honestly. And now to check on the chicken. Carefully lift out a piece. Ooh, doesn't that look good? You can see the black pepper on there. Smell of those biscuits are killing me. Yum, yum, yum. Now, I want to check the doneness. Make sure it's cooked all the way through. So you can do it two ways. You can cut open into the chicken, but look right to the bone. And so long as there's no pink visible near the bone, you know the chicken is cooked through. Or you just use a temperature probe, go right into the center, and make sure it reads 165. So it's fully cooked. 
I'll keep doing this by small batches. Then I'm gonna eat a biscuit, and that's gonna give me my craving for jam because I have to go visit Anne at Kurt's Orchards. She makes some fantastic jams. And you know, I think I need some jam, not just for dessert, but for breakfast tomorrow with those leftovers.